Hi everyone, uh, I'm Dylan from BR Consulting and today I'm going to be showing you how to install Nginx and enable Quick and HTTP3 support on it. So I hope you're having a lovely day and let's get to it. The first thing we're going to need is a Debian or Ubuntu container or virtual machine. Go to Google. We're going to Google Google. Not nah, just kidding. Um, and we're going to go ahead and search for Nginx repository. Once we get into the Nginx repository or Linux packages page, we're going to check uh, our distribution, our Linux distribution. If you don't know what distro you have, you can always do cat slash etc slash os hyphen release. That is going to tell you what distro and what uh, Linux version you have. Now, once we've gone to the Nginx page, we're going to go to our uh, necessary, our, our respective uh, section for our distribution. And we're going to install the prerequisites. Now, this is relatively straightforward. All you got to do is just follow these instructions. Uh, so, the first thing I generally do is before installing anything, I like to do an apt update minus y. So that's going to bring us the latest uh, apt lists uh, and repository package lists. Uh, once we've done that, we can go ahead and install the prerequisites. So bear in mind, if you're using Debian, you're probably not going to have sudo installed, um, especially if it's an LXC container on Proxmox. So you might get an error with that. If you want to, you can do apt install sudo, or you can just remove sudo from the command. Now, for the purposes of this tutorial, I have installed it previously so that we don't get errors every time that we put a command with sudo. So we're going to install these packages. Uh, once we have installed those packages, we're going to go ahead and do a curl of the nginx signing key. That is going to add us uh, add uh, the Nginx signing key to our GPG key ring. Uh, once we have added it, we're gonna gonna do a display of that key just to check that it has added it correctly. You're gonna want to check generally with the last four letters and numbers being the same. You can make sure that it is the same key and with the expiry date as well. Once we have uh, ensured that the signing key is correct, we're going to go ahead and add the repository to our apt lists. Now, very important thing here, you're going to want to add the mainline Nginx repository because the stable Nginx version does not support, as of October 2023, Quake, uh, Quake and HTTP3. So, uh, we have H, um, uh, Nginx 1.24 on the public uh, stable channel, and we have Nginx 1.253 on the main line. Uh, so we're going to be using that. Now, generally, unless you're using some sort of plugin or some weird configuration, you're not going to have much issues uh, with the mainline version. In fact, it might probably have more bug fixes and stuff than, than the stable one. Once we have added this to our sources list, you can actually do a cat of etc apt sources list dot d slash nginx list. And you're going to see that you have the uh, repository for nginx. Be uh, sure that it says mainline here. I'm going to press Control L to clear the console. And once we've done that, we're going to want to set, as it says here, the repository pinning to prioritize the Nginx repository over the distribution provided ones. Once we've done that, we can go ahead and uh, continue to ins update the package lists and then install Nginx. Now, you're going to see that when you update, now it gives you a hit on the Nginx packages list, and then it installs the version 1.253 or whatever version is out by the time we're watching this. Once we have Nginx installed, 
we can go ahead and do CD ETC Engine X, and we can do nano of conf D default conf. In the event that you have it installed already, uh, keep in mind a couple of things. If you were using Nginx 1.18, which is, I believe, the standard stable version on the Debian repos, and you are using SSL, you're going to have to change if you have HTTP2 activated. Instead of having HTTP2 on the same uh, listen directive, you're going to have it as a separate line that says HTTP2 on. Otherwise, it's going to crash your Nginx um, instance or service. Now that that is out of the way, for those of you that already have a Nginx instance running, um, we are going to go ahead and uh, create a default site to test our uh, HTTP2 HTTP <laughs> Our HTTP um, 3, 2, and 1.1. 1 .1. So one thing to keep in mind, to test HTTP 3, you're going to need to have a valid, full, qualified domain name and a valid SSL certificate. Otherwise, it is going to fall back to HTTP 2. So basically, uh, you can't test it with IPs or uh, local host or stuff like that, it's not going to work. Or at least, in my case, it didn't work. Okay, so here we have a very basic um, page for our Nginx uh, just to test the certificate and the HTTP protocols. So you're going to have your location, your error pages, etc. You're going to want to add the following things. The first thing you want to you're going to want to add is listen443 or whatever port you want to use for uh, quick. Uh, quick reuse port default server. Now it is very important that on the server that you're using quick and you use reuse port, you use default server because this is a socket option. Now, this option is going to carry over to every other virtual host and server if you have multiple sites, uh, and you're not going to have to put it on any other virtual host. So basically, on, on all the other virtual hosts that you have, you're just going to put listen443 quick first. No reuse port, no default server. Now, once we've done that, we're going to do listen443 SSL. Uh, not listener. Listen, there we go. <laughs> and once we've done that, we're also going to want to add a certificate key and a certificate for our uh, site. So now in this case, I'm going to use my own because it is a valid FQDN certificate. So let's go ahead and do uh, SSL certificate on opt uh, full chain dot pem, and then SSL certificate key on slash opt slash full uh, proof key dot pem. Uh, let's check that that is effectively, oh, this is not redirect, this is return. There we go. Um, once we have added the SSL certificate and key, we are also going to want to add a couple of things. Uh, one of the most important things that you need for quick is the headers as well as, enable, as enabling it on the socket. So we're going to go down here to our root location, and we are going to add header, alt svc, which is uh, it stands for alternate or alternative service. Then we're going to put inside single quotes, uh, h3 equals double quotes, server, uh, sorry, uh, colon, uh, money symbol, server, port. And then we're going to do semicolon MA, which stands for max age. And we're going to do, I don't know, 1800 seconds. And then we're going to do another header, which is going to be at header um, X quick between single quotes H3. And there we go. And a couple of things you can also add here to your, uh, your listen options are quick retry 
on. And then you can also enable SSL early data on and quick GSO on. Now, I'm, I generally don't like enabling offloading things, so I'm not going to enable quick GSO. Uh, and there we go. Once we have that, if we do nginx minus t, it should tell us that the syntax is okay. And we're going to do systemctl restart nginx. You can also do systemctl enable nginx minus minus now, and that is going to both enable and start the service in the same command. Now, once we've done that, we're going to go ahead and um, open ourselves a uh, private window just so that it doesn't cache anything. And we're going to do HTTPS slash slash, uh, or actually HTTP plain, just to test the redirect. And we're going to do quick test.brconsulting info, which is the name I gave it, I gave it on the DNS. And as you can see, it's going to load directly with Quick. Now, how can you check without this indicator, uh, which is extremely useful? Uh, you can also check if you want. You can open your web developer console. And if we reload, now in this case, it's going to tell us 304. So basically, the website didn't change. So it, it just used the cache version. So to avoid that, I'm going to disable cache for a moment. So let's go ahead and do add header cache control no cache no store and restart nginx um and so basically if we reload now it's gonna always do a 200 request and as you can see here if we click on the request it is going to tell us that it is x quick h3 and alt service is h3 on the port that it is running with the maximum h that we gave it. Disclaimer here from future Dylan, if you want to check if your browser is actually loading the page in HTTP 3, 2, or 1.1, you have to check, as shown in the image here, uh, with Brave or Chrome in the protocol column of the network tab when you click the request, or in Firefox in the uh, web developer console as shown in the image now. Uh, so it works. Awesome. Now, if you don't have a FQDN certificate that is valid, as I said before, it is not going to work for you. And is it's probably going to fall back to HTTP2. Um, also, a couple of things I wanted to let you guys know uh, is generally when you're testing things, it is a good idea to use return 307 instead of 301 because instead of being a permanent redirect, it is a temporary one. And also, uh, a couple of other options you might want to enable are HTTP2, set it to on, and then HTTP3, set it to on. So we're going to do that, restart Nginx, and if we go here and reload again, you're going to see that it still uh, loads with HTTP3. Awesome. So, uh, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed it. And if you have any questions or any things that uh, you have doubts with, let me know in the comments. I answer as quick as I can. Uh, so, yeah, I hope you have a great day. And, uh, yeah, peace.